Today, we're going to talk about Prop 47 implementation and take this opportunity to assess some of the ongoing challenges and opportunities of implementation of Prop 47. You know, when we passed Prop 47 in this state, in my view, it was a demonstration of people power in the state. It was a, it was a proposition. It was something that we voted on uh, directly as voters. It wasn't something that the legislature did. And when it comes to addressing some of the most critical racial and economic justice and social justice issues of our time, um, Prop 47 was absolutely critical because it sought an important first step, and I say first step deliberately, um, in reforming our criminal justice system. There's still much to do, but Prop 47, I thought, was a, a transformative step. And, you know, at the state level, we often talk about the Department of Corrections. And that's not the name of that department. It's the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, but that rehabilitation mission um, has been lost. And uh, we need to bring it back, and, and Prop 47 uh, will, will help with that. Since the passage of Prop 47, uh, about 211,000 people have applied for their felonies to be changed to misdemeanors. And that's significant. For instance, a person with a felony conviction is 50% less likely to be called back by an employer um, in order to get employment. If we're really talking, if we're serious about, you know, helping people uh, turn around and, and be able to do better and, 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 you know, help the community and help themselves, these are the kind of things that we should be looking to do. I got out of prison in 2012. I served five years, told myself I won't go back. But for 18 months, I could not find a job because there are nearly 6,000 restrictions on people with a felony record. So we're telling people do the right thing, good things that happen to you, but that's a lie. Why are there barriers? 73% of these are lifetime restrictions. We are moving in a direction where we should not be adding these extreme punishments for drug possession or drug sales. And so being, now I, I'm going back to Prop 47, extremely proud that we are the state that said that we are not gonna send people to prison for possessing drugs. Um, so prior to Prop 47, you know, if you possessed cocaine, you go to prison for three years. I mean, that's just almost criminal to me. You're treating someone with an addiction by sending them to prison. Um, so I'm really proud that we did that. If I had my way, um, there should be no juvenile who was treated in adult court, period. Um, the Select Committee on the Status of Boys and Men of Color has been an important voice in the state. It's, in my view, the most active select committee of any. It's the most popular. It's the one with, with the most traction. And it's really um, focused on, on young men and boys who have been um, locked out of opportunity, uh, locked into environments uh, of, of inequity, or, or literally locked up. And uh, we seek through this committee and our work to unlock the talents and gifts and brilliance of our young men and boys of color and provide opportunity that previously hasn't been there. And so that's why this is a, a really important hearing and that's why our committee continues um, to do the work that it does. Mm -hmm.